Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the 10 things I wish I knew before I started business. In hindsight, it's always easy to see what you should have seen, but I'm going to talk about it, so I hope you stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, thanks for joining us. I hope you dig this podcast. There is 230 plus episodes. Go back, binge. It will literally, it's hundreds of hours of content. So go back, watch it all. It's everywhere podcasts are found. Of course, YouTube also. And if you are a window cleaner at all or do any type of window cleaning, I want to be your rep. This is the shameless plug of the show. I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com, that's window cleaning resource. And my number, my cell phone number, is 862-312-2026. Call me, text me, I'd love to put your orders in, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. And if you just wanna talk, or ask questions or anything, that's my number, 862-312-2026. Check it out. And uh, if you are new or even experienced, in window cleaning, American Window Cleaner Magazine. American Window Cleaner Magazine is the the, the absolute in uh, window cleaning magazines. Now, some of you think, you know, magazines are dead because it's paper and you don't have paper, everything's on. I love the feel of a real magazine. And every month you get stickers also to decorate your bucket. Not decorate, that's stupid. Just to like, you know... Join the brand, join the culture of window cleaning in general. It is absolutely amazing. So go get that. It's A-W-C-M-A-G, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yeah. So today we are talking about the 10 things that I wish I knew. And I went through the intro a little bit quick because there's 10 of them. And I want to give them each a fair chance to talk about them. Now, all of these kind of items we've talked about on shows more specifically, but I figured 10 of them together that if I could have the hindsight to go back and tell myself these things, and if I told myself, I probably wouldn't believe me anyway, but these are super, super important. I know you guys have your list of things that you see, and if one of your ideas is not on this list, comment on YouTube and just let me know. Let me know what... Um, what would be in your top 10, even if it's one or two items I missed. But these are things that I've learned the hard way, and now I could see where I didn't believe this in the beginning. And I'm just going to start right off with number 10. It's fake it till you make it. Now, before you go, oh, I'm not going to pretend to be somebody I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that you have to have the confidence In the beginning, people hire you because you're the expert. There is no real term to expert. The the actual definition of a professional means you do something for money. Right? You do something for money, meaning like you do a service, you're a professional as soon as you make a buck. So the first job you do, after that, you're the professional. So why not be confident in what you're saying? Asking a question instead of saying a statement is the way, right? Oh, would you like a bid? Oh, here's your price. Is that is that okay? Is that too high? If you're unconfident, you're not telling fact. You're showing you're not confident in your decisions. Be confident in what you're doing. Fake it till you make it. And that helps your whole overall uh, mindset, but it also puts your customers at ease. And they also go, well, this is why I'm paying this dude or chick. This is why I'm paying them this amount because they're the professional fake it till you make it Uh, number nine on the list is going to be focusing on taxes now taxes are a four-letter word even though you don't really spell it with four letters it's five letters but nobody talks about taxes taxes suck and then they get money from you and guess what tax times in the middle coming out of winter when we don't have money so it's like oh man You know, the first tax time I got ever uh, got, uh, you know, 
by the uh, the man was uh, my accountant one year. I went in and she was a family friend, which first error, it's a mistake there. But I went in and she said, wow, you guys did really good last year. And this was right down, like literally this was the Friday before the Monday everything was due. And I was like, wow, yeah, thanks. And in my head afterwards, I was like, if your tax person ever says that, that's a bad thing, right? That's not a good thing. But anyway, I owed a ton of money. At the time, it was a ton of money. Now, I pay like three times that much every year just... (laughs) Anyway, but at the time, it was a ton of money, right? Because I was newer in business, and we didn't plan the way we were supposed to. She did zero tax prep. It was like, oh, hey, you need to pay... X amount of thousands of dollars by Monday. Like I wouldn't have been able to make payroll. I, I, it was, it was a sucky, sucky time. And then from that, because it created pain, like a lot of just taxes in general, I just ignored it. I mean, really, we just ignore taxes. I don't do anything specific. And then when it comes to it, I'm like dreading it, dreading it, dreading it. And then all of a sudden, you know, for years, this is 10, 12 years ago, I was the, um, I was the, uh, guy who was doing extensions just because I was delaying it. Well, in an extension, you still have to pay any taxes owed by the 15th of April. Even if your extension brings you to August, you still have to pay that. So now you're getting penalized. And I was just, I was so dumb. I was so dumb until a few years ago. I just realized like, you know what, if this is a pain point for me, I'm going to get an awesome tax firm and they're going to take care of everything for me. Will it cost money? Yeah, but the headaches and the months of stress, like the just panic and like, you know, uneasy nights knowing tax time's coming sucks. I don't want that. So I hired a company and I focused on taxes. I changed the way that we uh, filed. I changed my classification, an LLC filing as an S corp. If you don't know all that, uh, just to give you a real brief S corp synopsis, an S corp, you're still an LLC, but the way you file is an S corp. That means I pay myself a check every month. And out of that, once a quarter, I pay myself dividends. Well, your dividends are taxed at a different rate than your actual pay. So I pay myself a normal salary that I would, I wouldn't be able to like, you know, I'd be able to live on that, but not like as comfortable as I'd like. And then dividends, meaning how well you're doing change every quarter, every quarter, then I could write myself a dividends check and I'm taxed half as much on a dividend check. And it works really, really well. It helps you save on taxes, but also in the filing. So focusing on taxes is, is really, really a big one. Um, another one that tethers off that is as soon as I find out, by the way, this is number seven, but as soon as I found out that if I pay another firm a few hundred dollars, which is nothing, right? That for us, if you're making a hundred dollars an hour, a $200 a month bill is two hours of your work. I would hundred percent pay somebody two hours of work to do something that I just don't want to do, right? There's efficiency and there is worrying about the cost so as soon as you start paying for services you realize there's a whole nother world that will allow you to do you your job if your job in your company is to go out there and make sales call make sure your company's running make sure that new work is coming in your advertising your marketing your website your everything is all up to par Why are you spending any time doing taxes? Why are you spending any time worrying about, you know, wealth management or worrying about payroll or worrying about all these other services that could be handed off to a different company? Something as simple as like Responsibit program that goes into your website. People can uh, get quotes any time of day or night, automatically schedule that type of thing. It's like hiring an employee. To take care of that. When I hired a temp agency for employees, they handle all of that. All of that. I put zero, let me, I point, I put 0.01% effort into that. I have to make a call when a new person comes. Everywhere down to if somebody's check is wrong, oh, give them a call, right? 
Hiring out services makes your job easier. It makes what you do, I don't even want to say easier, but you can focus on what you're doing. Here's the big thing in business to jump off the, the list for just a second. You have to take a look at what you do. You have to take a look at your company and what you actually do. I know you do everything. I, I get that. But what makes you the most amount of money? What are you doing that brings the most amount of value into your business? Now, that may be different for everybody, but you have to think about that. Right now, just think about what brings in the most amount of money or value that you do. That thing that you're thinking about or that you may think about or this one you're going to brainstorm about is what you need to focus on. If you can bring in $200 an hour worth of value by doing the marketing and the sales, that's what you need to do. You don't need to be doing a $15 an hour in value, which would be the window cleaning side, right? Again, these are my opinions. I'm sorry. I'm just some dummy. If this is not your path, it's not your path. Don't let me change that. But if you're doing something that costs $200 or bringing $200 in value and you stop doing that to do something else like taxes, Right? Say you take that tax side of it, or you do your payroll, or you do whatever, and all of a sudden, five hours a week is put towards that. That's $1,000 of value. You're going to pay way less than $1,000 if you pay a company to do it. Right? So why would you step over dollars to make pennies? Why would you stop doing something that's $200 in value an hour to doing something that's $15 an hour in value by cleaning the actual windows? You hire somebody to do that, right? Now you could have a hundred window cleaners out there, right? You could have a accounting firm do your taxes. You could have your P&Ls, your profit and losses, your your taxes, your, your accounting, all of that done by a firm who does it way better, way faster, way more efficient. You don't have to do anything. Don't worry about the amount you're paying them. Worry about the amount you're losing by trying to do that. If you're doing your own taxes, and I'm, I swear I'm going to move on. If you're doing your own taxes, you don't know what you're doing, right? You're missing deductions, which cost you money. You're taking 20 times longer than any accounting firm would do, right? And you're doing a worse job at it. Why are you doing that? And you're stressing yourself out. I'm telling you, these are things I wish I knew in the beginning. I wish I would have implemented right away and it would have made my... Uh, 16 years in window cleaning easier, right? Pay for services. Don't look at it as an expense. Kind of. <laughs> number uh, seven, that was number eight actually. Number seven is the fact that tools make you money. Now, preface this anytime I talk about stuff. Yes, I'm a sales rep. I've also owned a business longer than I've been a sales rep. So I understand business. I understand window cleaning. It's been my life for 16 years, 17, something. It's been my life for a very, very long time. Everything I've done has been surrounding myself with that. And it took me an embarrassing long, an embarrassingly long time to come to this idea. Now, let me talk about leasing just as a side note, we offer leasing, which is commercial financing, right? I, I get it. This is not a plug for uh, financing equipment. But when people look at that, they go, oh, I'm not going to pay. I, I can't pay more than the product's worth. I can't. What they're looking at it as is a TV. You buy a TV, don't finance a TV. That's dumb. Buy a TV. Because the TV is never going to make you money. It's just going to be worth less. But when you buy equipment that makes you money, it's not about what you're paying for the equipment, it's what the equipment brings in, right? The same thing happens or works for any tools, even if you buy them outright. People will look at, and I had a guy, this is this is um, more of an anomaly, but I had a guy who bought a channel for his squeegee he could only buy a channel at the time. And he said, 
I bought that a couple weeks ago. Now I need a handle. That's kind of weird, but okay. Well, this is the handle I like with that one. It was like a $26 handle. The Ninja handle, actually, for a wide body. Sent it over. It's 26 bucks. So that's the one I like. Whoa, he wrote. That is way too much money. I'll have to look elsewhere. If you're griping over $26 for equipment that is going to make you $100 an hour, you do not understand business. Now, I understand everybody has a budget in the beginning. I understand you can't get blood from a turnip. I get all that. But when you get to a certain point in business, and if you don't see that the tools you buy bring you value, or that if you buy a, say, water-fed system over squeegeeing on a ladder, and it cuts the time in half, that it just doubled what you make an hour. If you don't see that, now you're working from the ground, you can possibly change some uh, insurance that you pay because you're working with water fed. Now you're doing jobs safer. People are able to do more work in a day because they don't get as fatigued as trying to carry ladders. You don't have injuries from rotator cuffs or slips or any of that stuff. If you don't see the value that your equipment brings, you got to just look at it a little closer. Buy good equipment. Buy good equipment. Now, there's some stuff out there that may suck, you know, that may be expensive. Don't just buy it because it's expensive, but don't focus on the price as much as you do now. Now, I'm telling you, again, this is just something that I wish I knew back then because I was cheap. I bought the wrong systems in the beginning. I bought a DI tank with this garbage pole like 12 years ago, and I blew through three quarter cube of resin in seven hours, 180. Like I just did it wrong. Cause I was trying to be cheap. Don't be cheap. Just get the right thing right away. Right. And the right thing doesn't mean the most expensive. Say we have a world one kit. Uh, world one is a system. That system is ridiculously cheap. It's an RODI that is amazing. It's 1499. We also have a system that is $8,000. We have uh, hydro stations, which are $14,000. It doesn't mean that's better because it's more, but it doesn't mean that instead of spending the $14.99 on that system, because that's the right one that you try to make do with DI tanks. Don't buy cheap stuff from uh, Amazon. You know, and by the way, we have stuff on Amazon. That's not the point. The point is the cheap stuff. You go on there and go, well, this is, you know, a Shenzhen pole or brush or squeegee or something, or just don't cheap out on equipment because equipment makes you money. Understand that the better those tools are, the better you'll be. Now, this is the same reason you go to any real mechanic, a real mechanic, somebody who makes a living with their tools and they have snap on and all the really good brands. Matco, right? Matco. Anyway, all really, really good brands. Their socket, their 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 wrenches probably cost $15 a piece, $20 a piece, $50 a piece. You just all their tools are expensive because that makes them money. Same concept in window cleaning. I know, I'm off my high horse. By the way, if you want any supplies, <laughs> 862-312-2026. Yeah. Um, but another one is, uh, number six is split testing. When I started, I didn't realize how valuable split testing was. I just thought it was expensive. Split testing is as you advertise, you're always changing slight things. When a change works, you keep what that change was and you change something else. So I may have a postcard that'll start off with a red background, yellow light writing, uh, it'll have uh, all the information. Big letters will say window cleaning my number. I'll send that out. The next time, I'm not sending it to everybody. I'm just doing a little batch. The next time I send it to those people, I'm going to have a yellow background, same everything else. If the numbers go up or the numbers go down in ROI, I change then something else. If the numbers go down, I go back to red and I change the words window cleaning to window washing. Do the numbers go up or go down? If they go down, I keep window cleaning. If they go up, I keep window washing. Then I change the color of the font. Did that go up? Did it go down, right? So as this all goes on, remember, we're building empires 
here. This is a long-term play that we're doing, not a short-term play. Through the years, with your split testing done right, after a couple years, you'll have a piece that is absolutely the top tier for your area, the best ROI, and it's just like printing money. If you can get your ROI on a piece to say 3%, you're gonna make a killing, a killing, right? That means that you're receiving 3% back in those. So you spend a thousand, so you shoot out a thousand postcards, 3% of them come back, right? So 3% of 1,000 is 30. 30 at, say, 300 is like our average ticket. That's what you're getting back. $9,000 every time you pull the trigger. My math is always bad, so if it's wrong, correct me if it is. But you go spend 1,000 pieces to send out is probably going to be around uh, three, 400 bucks maybe, depending on how you get them printed and you get back $9,000, if you can do that, it's an ATM, right? You could just put it in. If you're going to get a 3% ROI, and nothing's guaranteed, but if you're getting that and getting that and getting that, instead of putting $1,000 in marketing, maybe put $2,000, you're getting 18,000 back in work, right? As you split test, the piece gets better and better and better and more tailored and better, and you eventually find the holy grail of advertising. Once you get there, Everything changes as far as your ROI. Split testing does not cost you money. It makes you money. Split test the heck out of everything. The number five thing on our list is branding. Branding, you have to understand you're not McDonald's. No one is going to see your logo and go, I know exactly who them they are. Unless they use you all the time and even then they probably don't care. So don't understand that your branding will ever be to that game. But... The branding still has to convey the message and the professional side of things. So everything needs to be branded the exact same. You got a shirt, brand it. The exact same logo, style, everything is everything else. Don't use Comic Sans as your logo or don't use clip art. Spend some time to get a logo. It's so cheap to get good logos nowadays. But put that on everything and across the board. If you are using the... Um, typical kind of window cleaning you know deep blue background with the water drops if that's your like thing that you like make sure that that is on every piece that you do that's your letterhead your envelopes your business card your website your flyers door hangers exactly the same logo now here's what you do to make this happen the best is create one piece or have someone create one piece have somebody create one piece that's very large and very uh, high res, right? We're talking about a big sheet, say, 8.5 by 11 for an ad, right? Or something along that lines. And then you're using that as a template for everything else. You shrink it down for door hangers, change the information. You make it larger for postcards, change the information. You make it narrow for envelopes, you change the information. But everything branded at the exact same time will allow people to understand and connect. They'll get familiar even when you're not the McDonald's. Branding is more important than you think. Number four on the list of the top 10 things I wish I knew was the difference between active and passive advertising and marketing. Active means you're going there. Active means you got your rifle, you're going deer hunting, you go into the woods and you go look for deer right? They're crossing and making, um, they're walking around, you're walking around. It doubles your chances, probably even more because you can specifically see what's going on. Passive means you're just sitting there. You know, I could technically sit here in my window of my bedroom with a gun, uh, completely illegal, of course, and wait for a deer to come. More than likely, it's not going to happen. But if it did, I'd be there. If I was there at the right time, Hey, I get a deer. But the difference between the two is that one is harder and more work, but you get a higher yield. Passive is a lot easier to do, and you just wait for it, right? Passive is having a great website. Active is the SEO for the website. You have to have both pieces, but you can't just go off of one. 
I know a lot of people out there, again, no, no harm, no fall if it's you, but I know a lot of people who are like, you know what, I don't, I don't call my customers. I don't do the, the dentist, uh, the dentist reschedule. I don't do any of that. You know what, when they're ready, they'll call me. Cool. Like again, you can't do it wrong. It's your business, but that's not the way to do things. Your business is a ton, extremely smaller than what it would be if you were doing active and passive. Active advertising, going out there, getting people, right? Active is sending out postcards. Active is doing Facebook promotions, Instagram promotions. Active is SEO work. By the way, Justin Monk SEO, amazing company. Coming up to the season where that kind of thing's getting back into play. Uh, but I always got to tell him, he's a friend of mine and he really is the most legit company I've dealt with in business, I think. Uh, monk seo anyway do that and then have your passive also always happening you have to pair them up you have to actively be going because what you're doing is going to get people it's your job to make your company successful if you want to be bigger you want to be stronger you want to be healthier it's your job no one else's it's your job to make that happen active is more important than passive but you got to do both right the number three thing is that in equals out. In equals out. What you put into business is what you get out. Now, i not touched on this one for a long time, but understand the amount you put in is what the amount you get out. I didn't really understand this in the beginning because it was I was new. I was making money. I'm like, man, this is great. I make all this money. It just kind of is happening. If I would have put any type of actual effort in the first two years of my business, I would have doubled my business by the end. If you want to be bigger, stronger, more successful, if you want more money, if you want more freedom, if you want a bigger company or a stronger company, what you put in is what you put out. If you're brand new to window cleaning, right now is the decision you can make. Work eight hours a day, even if you don't have eight hours of work to do. You can find things to do. Doing marketing, right? Putting your website out there, just giving people your information, doing free advertising. You can work eight hours a day even if you don't have eight hours of work. What you put in is what you get out, I promise you. The number two thing that I wish I knew was advertising when you're busy. Only advertise when you're busy. Strike while the iron's hot. No one in the middle of winter, in the middle of a snowstorm is going, I want window cleaning. Even if you said, hey, I'll give you this window cleaning for a dollar. It's the concept I always give you. If you're a, a vegan, right? If you're a vegan, there is no price that I can give you for a cheeseburger that you'll buy. It's not the time. You're not the audience. It's not going to sell no matter what the price is. So advertise when you're busy. As soon as it get busy, gets busy this, this uh, spring, have everything in, in, in line. As soon as the light switch flips, advertise everything you have. Everything. People are hungry for it. If I got a cheeseburger and it's dinner time and I'm talking to people who are starving and they need something, I don't have to discount my price. I don't have to give you a sailor special. All I got to do is show you a billboard with a juicy cheeseburger and a big old golden M. And it drives people to go buy it. You'll get more ROI when it's time and you'll get a better reaction when it's time. The problem is people wait till winter. It's slow. Got nothing going on. Oh my God, I got to advertise. I'm going to die. And then they waste their money advertising. Only advertise when it's busy. I promise you. And the number one thing and the 10 things I wish I knew was price doesn't matter. I know a lot of you knew that. Price doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Price is what matters when you're not selling the value. Understand we're a luxury business. No one needs us. If somebody goes, oh, you're too high. First off, you didn't tell them what they were getting for the money. Right? If I said I'm selling you something for a thousand dollars right now you may not have a thousand dollars like ah, i don't know what it is i don't it's a thousand dollars it's the only thing you can focus on is that thousand dollars that's all you know but as soon as i tell you it's a brand new mclaurin it's a brand new lamborghini it's a brand new ferrari 
all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, yeah, I'll come up with a thousand dollars. Oh, that makes n- yes. It doesn't matter what other cars are there. I'll give you uh, no no hold on. I have either the Lamborghini or the Kia. Well, without telling you any other information, you know both of those cars, and you go, well, I'm going to take the Lamborghini. There's so much more I'm getting for the same thousand dollars. I'm getting so much more. People will choose that. Same thing in your business. Let them know the value of why they should choose you before the price. Focusing on the price is what you do in the beginning. And remember, you're not your target market. You're just not. I would never pay myself to clean windows. Maybe you had your windows professionally cleaned before you started window cleaning. If you did, comment because that's amazing. But I've never met anybody like that. I'm not my target market. So when I put together proposals, I've submitted proposals in the six-figure range. I've uh, done contracts for $100,000, right? I, I I would not pay that myself. I'm not paying $100,000 for windows to be cleaned, right? I'm not paying $100,000 for trucks to be washed or, or I'm not paying, you know, $10,000 for a roof to be cleaned. Well, I also don't own a $3 million house on the ocean. That person's going to pay $10,000 to get their house in siding washed or their house in more than likely uh, uh, stucco washed, <laughs> right? You're not your target market. Don't focus on price. You're not who you're supposed to compete and, and advertise to. You're just not. Whew. We're a little long. I apologize, but we did it. 10 things. Normally, I don't go 10 things, but anyway, if you liked it and you're like, hey, I want to know more, better my business, be awesome, or go to awcmag.com and get a subscription, please. Uh, That sounded uh, more beggy than it meant to, but do it. It's an awesome magazine. Not only is it my magazine that it would be a high five to see more uh, of you subscribing, but it's absolutely amazing. And I'm super, super proud of everybody that's in that magazine, everything that it stands for and it does. It's really great. Uh, So definitely... Go do that, awcmag.com. Do it for me. (laughs) And if you need supplies, shameless plug number two, call me, 862-312-2026. Yes, that's my cell phone. Yes, I text. Put it all in your cart and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put it in. I would love to do that. It costs you nothing extra, and I get cheddar for it, so that's the way to do it. But either way, until next week, go listen to this episode again. There's a lot of info in there. Hopefully you take it to heart. Change a few of those things if you're not already, and I promise you things will get more amazing in 2022. But either way, until next week, go out there and be epic.